My name is Reverend Canon Dr. Simon Omeke of the Reconciliation Anglican Church, Houston, Texas. I welcome you to our reconciliation time. Last time we discussed the reconciled life of the believer who has given his life to Christ, and invited Christ to come into his life and become his Lord and Savior. That way, he has become a child of God. Today, we are discussing the new life in Christ, a life that is surrendered to Christ it's a life that is transformed. It is changed in status from the Son of Man, that is the physical, to the Son of God, the spiritual. It's changed in character. It's changed in appearance. It's changed in citizenship. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 declares that our citizenship is in heaven. It's changed in behavior. It's changed in attitude. It's changed in interests. All this because the person is in Christ and Christ is in him. John chapter 14 and verse 20. The person in Christ is a new creature. He has been recreated. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. All things have been passed away. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He is a child of God by that relationship. And because he's a child of God, he's a spiritual being. Because God, his Father, is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4 and verse 24. Among the all things that have become new is this craving for the word, the spirit to make, that is the word of God. This spiritual milk is the physical food. The word is a spiritual food. Just as milk makes the physical body grow, so the word of God makes the individual grow spiritually. Hallelujah. The spiritual craving for the pure milk is the one that makes him grow. The word of God is the spiritual nourishment. As milk makes the physical body grow physically, so the word makes the individual grow spiritually. Growth and feeding are the two of the seven characters, characteristics of living beings. And speaking biologically, these seven characteristics manifest the person, the individual, as being a living thing. This time, the Christian manifests his genuine relationship with God, the genuine life that he has in God, by having a craving for the word. Quick leading leads him to growth. The Christian who feeds on the word of God grows spiritually. As physical growth leads to maturity, so does the spiritual. Maturity leads to another 
major characteristic of living things, which is reproduction. A mature living thing reproduces another mature, another thing. It reproduces and brings it to existence, and it starts life all over. This maturity is required even in the spiritual. The Christian who feeds continuously on the word of God is a new creature that now grows continuously. This is only made possible by his continuous feeding on the word. Because as he feeds on the word, the word becomes so clear in his mind and his being that he's able to pass it on to the others, to people who have need. So the Christian needs to be regularly feeding on the word. I'm encouraging brothers and sisters to learn to dig deep into the word of God. Locate Christian churches where they read the word of God and feed on it. They should take part in Bible study, the study of the word of God. He should also make time to pray in his time of relationship with God. He starts the day with a quiet time where he deals with God, and God guides him into his next day's assignments. He listens to God and receives instruction. That way, he is ready to carry people and carry the things God has given into his hand on to doing things the right way. It is my encouragement for young people who have come into the Lord to grow that way. Feed on the word, use it to feed others. You cannot pass on what you do not have. You need to have fed so well that when you pass it on, you'll be able to stand your way and give answers to arising questions. My brother and my sister, get into the word to show that you are really alive. Anything that is alive, that doesn't feed, within a time it dies. Brother, sister, don't die spiritually by failing to feed on the word. Feed continuously, feed so well that you are conversant with it. Don't be among those whom God is saying that they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Don't be destroyed. Get the knowledge so that you'll be able to pass it on. That way you can reproduce. You can reproduce another person or another individual like you who will also have a craving for the word. That way you are showing that you are genuinely alive. Be alive indeed. May God use you to be a means of producing other people, other generation of, people, of believers who seek to know the Lord and who need to follow God until the end of their lives. That way they are ready to carry on to the next generation. Brothers and sisters, before I go, I use this chance to give you an invitation to give your life to Christ. Acknowledge that you are a sinner and that you need the saving grace of Christ. Confess your sins to God Ask God to forgive those sins and then invite Christ to come into your life to become your Lord and Savior. That way you have become a child of God because you invited Christ. And as you make him your Lord and Savior, he'll be guiding you. Now, those of you who are ready to do that, you can say this prayer after me. Lord God, I thank you that you gave me this chance to be, hear the word of God and to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. 
to invite him into my heart. Lord Jesus, come in to stay. Order my daily lives. Order my daily activities. Let me follow you unto the end. I want to learn your word and let me have a craving for the word of God. Let me learn it and be a means of passing on this word to others. Lord, cleanse my life, forgive my sins, make me a child of God indeed. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As many of you as made this prayer along with me, you are invited to go to a living church where they read the word of God, learn it, and follow it. Be part of it, grow in grace, and the Lord will make you an instrument in bringing others to know him. Remain blessed.